This is Yeye Ocean Lade. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about autism. If you are interested in this topic, please like, share, and subscribe. Send it to all the people you know. I'm going to give a brief introduction about autism. Be right back. <laughs> What is Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD for short? According to OPWDD, the Office with People with Developmental Disabilities and Dr. Robert L. Haddon and from the Child Mind Institute in New York City, Autism Spectrum Disorder is a neurodevelopmental disability. Autism refers to behaviors of the self. The Latin word auto, self, is in practice of or act of. It is not an intellectual disability. It is a social and behavioral condition. ASD is sometimes also referred to as a syndrome. It is a syndrome because individuals can be multi-symptomatic, which is encompassing of the condition. It is called a spectrum because no two individuals with ASD will have the same symptoms or the same symptoms or exude the same behaviors as a result of the diagnosis. So what that means is I could be on the spectrum. My daughter could be on the spectrum. We may not have the same symptoms or we might have the same symptoms, but the way she exemplifies it through her behavior will look totally different on how I will exemplify that in my behavior. And I will give examples moving further on in the video. They say when you meet one person with autism, you meet one person with autism. It is not that there are so many different types of autism. It is that the behaviors of autism that are exemplified from person to person will be uniquely expressed while representing the same behavior in each individual. Let me explain some symptoms. Symptoms of autism may include ADHD, ADD, Tourette's, ODD, SAD, mood regulating disorders, depression, dyslexia, that's to name a few. Sensory integration disorder, sensitivity to sound, light, and touch textures of food and clothing. They may cover their ears to loud noises. They may refuse to eat food if it's too saucy, messy, smooth, or rich. Let's go over the behaviors. Behaviors such as stimming is short for stimulating. It is a term used to describe how one on the spectrum soothes themselves from anxiety, social situations, or a stressful experience. Stimming will look differently in each person, as I mentioned before. We could have the same diagnosis of ASD, but the way I show my stimming may be different from the next person. So for example, rocking back and forth is stimming, while standing or sitting on the floor. Flapping hands, playing with ears, playing with the hair, um, removing or pulling thread from clothing, unwinding or unraveling sock threads, rubbing body parts, or having a favorite stuffy to rub or hold for comfort is a form of stemming. They may have repetitive or rigid behaviors, and this too will vary from individual to individual. Some will line up their toys, such as Legos or um, cars, or wear the same clothing daily, want to sit in the same seat, even if they're not assigned, wants to eat or have a set schedule and become upset or anxious if it's deviated. So that means that if it's 12 o'clock, I need to eat at 12 o'clock. If it's one o'clock and I've been eating at one o'clock, I want to eat at one o'clock. If we're going for a jewelry ride in a car, I sit in the left seat, in the passenger seat, then that's where I want to sit. They don't like to deviate from their schedule. It uproots something in them. It makes them uncomfortable and anxious. They need to have schedules. They like things to be at a certain time, specific time. They love routine. So routine may not look the same in this child versus that child. For example, my child routine behavior, she, she needs to sit in that seat 
all the time, wherever we go out. No matter who car it is, if it's a rental car, I sit in the right seat in the back. I need to sit in that right seat in the back. And nobody else needs to sit in that seat because that's where I sit at. Whereas another child that I experienced, they want to eat lunch at a specific time. They know it's 12 o'clock. For them, that means lunch. And this is one and what I want to eat. Um, also rigid or rit ritualistic routine is that they eat the same food. They like to eat the same food all the time. You might say, well, we do that too, but it's specific for them. And it's hard to introduce new concepts, new ways, and new foods to them because they already like what they like. And because they have a sensory integrated challenge, some of the textures and and the and the the textures and the taste of the food affects them as well and how they want to receive it and eat it. Also, smells bother them too. Um, they're very sensitive to the smells of the food. If the food doesn't smell right, but it might look good to them, they will refuse to eat it. If it tastes funny or weird, they will refuse to eat it. That is just how this condition works with an individual that's on the spectrum. So, social. These individuals have trouble expressing their needs, wants, or concern in a sociably acceptable way. They lack social cues, which means they don't understand gestures sometimes, and they are very literal beings. So you have to be very specific when you are given directions or want them to follow your instructions. You can't say put it down, because they literally will put it down. We know down is intangible to how the tone and the way the conversation is going, but you have to be specific. If you wanted to put them down, tell them where you want to put it down. Put it down on the table. Um, you can't say go over there. They don't know where over there is that they will pick a spot what they think where over there is and will go over there. So you have to be very specific as to what you are saying with your directions, or it can get lost in translations because they are literal beings. They don't understand social cues, innuendos, or um, sarcasm. Along the way, they may go, are you being sarcastic? That's because over time, they have studied that behavior, but they don't do too well with that. So you have to be very specific. Um, <sighs> Let me see, I covered that. Ask them to repeat it back to you so they can confirm what you just asked them to make sure that your instructions is translated in their mind the way you want them to receive it. You can't rush them. This will further confuse them and cause anxiety. So just take your time and be very clear. As I said before, when you meet one person on a spectrum, you meet one person on a spectrum because how they respond to you to others and to the world is going to be very unique and very different. Even though, remember, it is the same symptom or same type of behavior that is being exemplified in its own unique way, in its own unique way, individual to individual. Please remember, so you don't get confused. It's just going to appear to be different. For example, the way my daughter stems herself, when she's upset, she will pull and swirl her hair. Another person that I know, they rock back and forth. Like they're upset or they, I, we don't know what's really going on, but maybe there's some type of anxiety inside, so they rock back and forth. Or they can't communicate as well. Sometimes the articulation is not formulated properly, so they become verbally frustrated, and then they can have lash outs. Maybe, you know, like we all have lash outs, but these individuals can lash out like verbally, maybe cry, have tantrums, because they just can't articulate their words and their feelings into words to convey it to you in the most appropriate way. So now the levels. There are different levels. Different levels of autism refers to the functionality of the individual. Not that this autism, this person with autism is here and this person is here. It's their functionality. It's their cognition. And it's, um, remember, this is not an intellectual disability. This is a neurodevelopmental social behavioral um, condition. So let me explain that. I personally wish they would do away with the term, the levels of autism, 
I I feel it should just be called their capabilities or the capabilities of autism. And the reason why I say that is because an intellectual disability, we don't say it anymore clinically, it used to be known as mental retardation. And the reason why I'm saying that so people can understand what an intellectual disability used to be called so you can make the correlation. It has something to do with your full-scale IQ. That's what it has to do. And autism refers to social behavior and the other symptoms that coincide with it. Okay, it's a neurodevelopmental condition. Please remember that. So, you can have a person, and this is their terms, one end of the spectrum, they call it lower functioning. And I don't like that because that's what is functioning. And on this end is higher end and that's higher functioning. What they're really saying is this. You can be on the spectrum, ASD, and the person on a spectrum can be intellectually disabled. And then you could have somebody on the spectrum who is not intellectually disabled, who is intellectually um at the bell curve, which would define that they have average intellect. And then the people who don't have any conditions, whether that is um, intellectual or autism, we are called neurotypical. And the people who have these other conditions are called neurodivergent. These are all sexy, extravagant names just to define stuff that were very offensive back in the day, okay? So, you can have a person who has an intellectual disability and be on a spectrum and someone who is not intellectually disabled and be on a spectrum. Depending on the severity of the intellectual disability will constitute the level of autism. Which I'm saying is the severity of the intellectual disability can make a person not be able to communicate, not talk, um, need direct help to tie their shoes, put on their clothes, wash themselves, and, and, and just can't communicate. And then um, some people on the spectrum who what they say high functioning, and I don't like that term, this just means that they don't have an intellectual disability, they're able to do a little bit more. But because autism is a social behavioral condition, sometimes the children or the individuals who have autism, they have social issues. So you may, they may need prompting with washing their clothes, putting things away properly, putting their dirty clothes away properly, cleaning up after themselves. They are not as organized as um, neurotypical people. So these are some things to look out for. If you find, this is my opinion, and this is how I kind of see when children have special needs. Like I can kind of tell that there's some issues going on or some concerns or challenges that a child may have. But if you see your child has these symptoms, as I mentioned earlier, but they're cognitively on point, meaning their full scale IQ is average or above but they have these other social challenges that just don't seem right, consider autism. Because if you go to a psychiatrist or a psychologist, and they, well, hmm, if you go to somebody who just doesn't have a discerning eye to pinpoint what autism is currently looking like, it's not Rain Man, it's not retardation, it's not intellectual disability, it, it doesn't have a look, it has an um, multi-symptomatic things if you will and you have to be you have to watch if you find that your child is getting one to two many diagnoses and they're only like five or six years old it's time to consider autism now there are a couple of tests that you would have to go under basically the test that they give to determine autism it is just a questionnaire I mean, I hate to say it that way. It's a sophisticated test, but it's a series of well thought out questions to ask the parent. 
And if you do not know what to answer because you're unfamiliar that your child is not racking, rocking back and forth, but they are stemming, but it's just not that stemming that way that you understand it to be because that's stereotypical autism, then you're going to miss it. My child was misdiagnosed because she was very smart. So they're like, well, she doesn't have autism, but her behavior was saying something different. And on that third test, we finally got the diagnosis and we went out to celebrate because we were happy now that we had something to go with. So it's not going to behoove you not to get a diagnosis because of society and you feel ashamed. I'm, I'm proud to be a parent with somebody on the spectrum. I'm proud to be a parent with my other two children who have special needs. I'm proud because I'm able to take my knowledge and share with other people and educate them. And I love to be an open book of resource to say, we can do it. We can do it. And who better else to help your child is yourself. So you have to educate yourself so you can educate others. So I'm sharing my experience with you because when I started to find out about autism, the people who already had children with autism could not tell me anything. They couldn't break it down. In fact, I was bothersome to them by asking them a slew of questions. So I want to give the information to you and whoever else needs it. So you have something called the GARS and the CARS. And um, I don't know the other ones right now, but those are um, tests that you can take from a psychiatrist or a psychologist particularly more psychiatrists. And then if you need a more intense and detailed one, you need a neuropsychological evaluation where they give you a plethora of different tests and that takes about two days to do. So good luck. I hope this helped a little bit. If not, I'm gonna do something else going into the behaviors of autism. So y'all peace, have a blessed day, share and like the video and stuff like that. I'm out y'all, be well.